We're here today to celebrate two really wonderful athletes, Mike Malarcy and Matt Malincon, and we're also joined by my colleague Tracy Foster at Anthem. Mike, can you give us a little bit of a background into who you are and, and your story? I grew up in New Mexico, and I was a very active child, snowboarding, rock climbing, basically all of it. I was on a foot patrol in Afghanistan, and my unit was ambushed, and I was injured by an IED blast. I destroyed the vision of both of my eyes completely. We had lost four, uh, four guys on that patrol. So when I woke up you know, a week and a half later, I felt like I had no right to feel sorry for me and that I was going to take this disability and overcome it. I am retired Army, and on September 18th, 2011, on a patrol, my vehicle was hit with an IED that caused both of my ankles and heels to be crushed. And I spent two years here at the Broke Army Medical Center going through limb salvage. And on August 2013, I had my left leg amputated. And then in August 2014, I had my right leg amputated below the knee. And now today I am an ambassador for Warfighter Sports, a program of Disabled Sports USA. And uh, snowboarding is more of my discipline, but I just enjoy all forms of adaptive recreational therapy. In addition to honoring these athletes, we're also here to honor two organizations that we at Anthem are very proud to partner with, Disabled Sports USA and United States Association of Blind Athletes. U.S. Association of Blind Athletes focus on helping people with visual impairments, so their goal really is to provide sports opportunities to every individual with a visual impairment in the United States. Disabled Sports USA serves people with a variety of disabilities, including those with visual impairments, but also those who are amputees, have spinal cord injuries, head injuries, MS, and a variety of others. And DSUSA offers over 40 sports uh, to help people. So they're two really cool organizations that we're really excited to be partnering with. What is it like realizing this new normal after your injury. For me and for a lot of people that go through something similar, you think you've got life figured out, you have all your plans, you know, all your hopes and dreams, everything is, is lined out and you're ready to go. And then something that you have no control over happens and all of it changes. And I discovered that in me reaching that point, recognizing that, hey, this, what I'm doing right now, this part of my life is, is my new normal. That was a a peaceful thing for me to realize. And it took a lot of stress and, and pressure off of me because I was putting all these expectations on what I'm supposed to be doing and what I should be doing. Taking the time to go to both occupational therapy and physical therapy, all the resources made available to me really just reached the full potential of my prosthetic legs. When you first had your injury, can you describe the initial feeling of what seemed like losing independence um, and initially needing to rely on others? Coming from an infantry background, your worth is valued by what you can do. And so all of a sudden, not being able to carry my load, needing others to accomplish the most simple tasks, it was very difficult and very disheartening. Realizing the need to be patient and, and to be able to ask for help. I've got no vision whatsoever. So for me to decide, I'm going to go into a, a city I've never been in and walk to a grocery store and buy some groceries, it becomes a a huge challenge. You want to do it on your own. You want to be you know, independent and you don't want to be the one that other people are picking up the slack for. You want to do that for the other guys. And realizing that and kind of getting over that, uh, I guess, pride in myself and realizing like, hey, I need people's help. Just because I need somebody's help doesn't mean I'm less of a person. I, you know, I do more now than I ever used to before I lost my sight. At some point, everybody needs help and there's nothing wrong with asking for that help when you need it. How does the new lifestyle impact um, your mental health and your relationships? Now I just kind of have this strong sense of I want to grow. I want to keep challenging. I want to keep adapting. And when I'm around my peers who are just kind of looking to check off that list, they want to get that house, they want to get that family going. And I'm just like, I just want to keep going. Like I'm trying to find a mountain I can climb. Well, for me, I'm married. I'm, I've got three young kids. The social norms and the normal roles that a, a husband and a wife take in a home don't really apply. I had a really hard time with that at first. And just with time and practice and working with, uh, with my family and realizing like, hey, who cares what people think is normal? We're both pitching in, we're both helping and in our house it keeps everybody happy and that's what matters. Can you tell us how sports, athletics, how they helped you regain your confidence? 
I do things a little bit different now, but I can still do all these different things. I mean, I've been to rowing camps, I've been to snowboarding camps, goalball, and I used to snowboard all the time, and I'm like, I didn't know blind people could do this, like, but I'm, I'm going to go try it because obviously it's a thing. And it's a lot of it is simply because I'm willing to try new things and to put myself out there. It gives me a boost. You know, when I go and snowboard on the side of a mountain with all these other uh, people with similar disabilities and stuff, when I come home, now you know, crossing the street is not that big of a deal. Walking to that grocery store doesn't really matter anymore because I just snowboarded down my first black diamond this year. So that confidence that translates into every other aspect of life. And that's one thing that, I mean, it's hard to put a price on that. After an infection took my left leg from me, it was my lowest point. And when I was invited to a skiing event, going there and meeting these athletes and seeing what I could become, it just re it shattered that preconceived notion I had of what an amputee is capable of. Things you thought were never going to be possible, like going up three flights of stairs. I just spent five days snowboarding. If I did that, I can definitely do this. Who are the people in your life that have helped you along the way, both in sports and in your everyday? My fellow wounded soldiers, wounded warriors, surrounding myself with guys like Mike who just keep pushing and not settling, they have been a huge asset to me. Going through that emotional challenge of discovering a new identity and kind of watching everything I had built crumble, just actually seeking that professional emotional help and guidance was, just, it was very, very important to me. So meeting everybody has good and bad days. There's days everybody needs help. And I've been able to meet so many people through these different camps and these different sporting activities. So to have people like that in my life to kind of check up on me and to, you know, to just keep me on the right path. And this is you know, other athletes. This is you know, my family members, my parents, my wife. And when I'm sitting around being a bum at the house, my wife will kick me in the pants and make me get up and, and go do something. She won't tolerate it either. I just really look to the, the tight network of adaptive athletes that I surround myself with. I look to those who have done more with less, and I look at how much they accomplish regardless, even though they are wheelchair-bound. They do have to show so much patience. Having those people that I can just lean on in that sense is so, so wonderful to have. How did you lean on the professionals and the therapists and the doctors and providers during your recovery process? How important were they? I leaned on them so hard. Yeah, I had an incredible, incredible surgeon. And there was a time when I was just so angry that my recovery was not going well. And he was, he was responsible for it, but I know he was doing everything he could. And rather than kind of like push it back on me, he just kind of took and accepted that and let me be angry at him, and for that I'll always be grateful. The physical therapists that have to take us at our, at our down days and see the potential even though we can't, just anybody that's willing to put on those scrubs and guide people to all they can be, I'm so grateful for. I didn't know anything about blindness, about blind people. I went from knowing absolutely nothing to doing just about everything in a, a year or two. And I, none of that would have happened if it hadn't been for everybody along the way. The recreational therapist, the occupational therapist, orientation and mobility specialist teaching me how to use a cane, um, I mean, living skills teaching me how to work in a kitchen. There were so many different small aspects of life that I had to relearn. I have to thank every single person that I came into contact with. You were at the Anthem Life Ski Festival in Breckenridge. Uh, this past winter. Tell us a little bit about the sense of community and camaraderie that goes on there. A lot of times it's the things that go on after we're off the mountains when we're all sitting back in the lodge and tired and sore and, and just connecting as people and talking about different aspects of life, sharing stories and things like, oh, well, this thing drives me crazy. And someone else says, oh, me too. And connecting with people who really, who I feel like really truly understand where I'm coming from with, with different issues. Our community is really small and it's like it's like a family reunion. Seeing people year after year, seeing, remembering where they were, seeing how far they've come, um, seeing the new people coming to them, and seeing where they are and their recovery and where they are in life, and being reminded of how when you were there, being able to show them how far they can go. It's a stronger sense of family than I think I've ever had. How does this help getting back to considering school or working again? When I was first considering school, people were like, oh, you can just go online, it'll be easy, you don't have to even go anywhere. 
And for me, that was not the right answer because I didn't want to just sit at home all day and sit at a computer. I want to actually go to a campus. But the thought of learning an entire campus with no vision it kind of makes me nervous. You know, for me, the sports helped to put the rest of life into perspective and the things that used to seem so overwhelming really aren't that big of a deal anymore. When I was dismissed from the Army, uh, I was just like, now I'm, I'm stuck. And then it was learning to adapt and overcome and learning that it, there was so much more that I could do. I actually just finished my first semester of college, and I love it. I don't think any of us really think we're going to experience a disabling injury or illness. I mean, none of us, we just don't think it's going to happen to us. And in fact, one in four 20-year-olds today will become disabled before they retire. And in fact, one in eight people will have a disability that lasts five years or more during their working career. And I don't say this to uh, scare people. Uh, it's really to help people understand that the risks are real. If you don't protect your income, um, what are you going to do? How are you going to pay your bills? Many of us don't have enough savings to pay our bills for a month if we couldn't work. The purpose of this is really just to bring awareness around the importance of protecting one's income with disability insurance and to realize that you know, disability insurance does more than just protect income. It provides a lot of services and, and support and programs that help people get back to work, get back to healthy, productive lives, uh, just like Matt and Mike uh, are doing today. So uh, we just want to remind people that it, it's, it's an important coverage. It's as important as protecting your homes and your cars.